um, I found out I had a stroke. So, you know, I was disabled. I couldn't, I couldn't talk, I couldn't walk, I couldn't do much of anything. I lost everything. I didn't have nothing but my clothes on my back. I had a cooler that I used for my refrigerator. About this big, you know, and see with a cooler, I had to get ice every day. And you know, the ice is melting. So I had to deal with this. And I tried to put lunch meat, cheese, egg, and that, that didn't work. And it was, it was such a hassle, it really was. I've not had the easiest time in the past. My son-in-law is a wounded war veteran and um, he has PTSD and a traumatic brain injury. So most of my money has been um, helping them also because with eight grandkids, it's, um, I can't, you know, they come first. So any spare money that I had went to help them as a family. It's, it's hard enough every day waking up and you're not the same person you were before the stroke. So dealing with that and then having to deal with, you know, the cooler and getting ice and pouring water out and trying to get food in here, I couldn't do it. And the frozen meals that, you know, that Pace offers, I couldn't. I couldn't house them because I had no refrigerator. Well, the night that my heat got turned back on, I was very excited. I called my daughter right away. Then about a week and a half to two weeks later, I got my um, hot water tank and it just was like icing on the cake. It was incredible that I, after six years, I now had heat and I now had hot water. It just, you know, I ran around running the tap so you know, I could feel the hot water and <laughs> it was really, it was interesting. It was so depressing to me. So when I mentioned it to my social worker, Linda, she said, you know what, we're gonna get you a refrigerator. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> and it happened, she got me a refrigerator. But and once they got me the refrigerator, now I get my frozen meals, I get them once a week and I put them in my freezer now, so that was really beautiful. I uh, still help my grandkids and my son and daughter, my daughter and son-in-law, but um, it's just easier. I just, I, you know, can flip a switch and have heat. It was just a relief off my shoulders that I didn't have to um, worry about my grandkids coming over and, you know, being cold while they were there. and. They tell me all the time that, Grandma, your house is cold. They were all, oh, Grandma's got heat, Grandma's got hot water. You know, we could take a bath here if we wanted. And they were, at different times, they would spend the night, you know, like grandkids do. And um, they were a lot more excited that they could, you know, have hot water and heat. <laughs> Whether it's from snow boots, CD player, sewage problems, a new roof or roof repair, coats, hats, gloves. So I'm a social worker, which means I help assess older adults and their needs, and then I help to meet those needs. And the philanthropy fund is one way that we try to fill those needs. And it makes my job so much easier and so much more fulfilling when I'm actually able to meet those needs. And the philanthropy fund is a great way, a great resource for me to do that. I think the philanthropy program needs hope to participants, where they wouldn't otherwise be able to get something that they really need, or something that would increase their quality or their just overall well-being. And it means that, yeah, that someone cares, that someone's able to reach out and make a difference in their lives, where normally they would just have to keep suffering, really. <laughs>